Thanks to Cricut for sponsoring this video. In today's all new episode, we're making the viral ghost pillow, creating some spooky craft magic and saving a ton of money DIYing our own high end Halloween decor instead of buying. Welcome everyone, I'm Shannon from the dailydiywire.com and make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video and I'll share just how much money you can save crafting along with me. Let's start with an easy one. These hanging back candles from Pottery Barn are $99 for a set of four and you know we can make these so much cheaper. Head into your Creek Design space, type in bats to the images and you'll find tons of different options for bat silhouettes. I picked four that I thought might work and then once I decided which one was going to be my favorite, I just deleted the ones I didn't want and then scaled this one down to size by dragging the corner. I made these about three inches wide and then as you can see, there is a plus button up in that right corner. You can click that to duplicate your bats to however many candles you want to make. We are going to be cutting this on a mat and we're going to select cardstock as that is the material we're going to be cutting today. So go ahead add your cardstock to your green cutting mat and then we're going to load that into our Cricut cutting machine. I'm featuring the Cricut Explore 3 today. Once my design was loaded into the machine, I hit the play button and the machine does all the magic work here and cuts out those bat silhouettes for us. Then go ahead, unload your mat from the machine and then flip your mat upside down to remove any of the excess. And then it helps a little bit to take your weeding tool to pop those bats off of your mat and set those aside as we start working on these candles to put these together. You have some options here. Dollar Tree carries these emergency LED candles that you add batteries to, or you can get these pack of six emergency candles, which are actually wax candles. So depending on the look that you're going for, you have some options at Dollar Tree. But I had these really cool candles from Amazon left over from Christmas last year and I thought these would work a little bit better So if you have a bigger budget, obviously you can upgrade but these are still really affordable lights So these lights are really cool. They come with a remote Which means you can sit in a chair and turn them off and on instead of individually having to turn them off and on You can also adjust the intensity of the lights and there's a timer on them. So that's really nice, too we're now going to add a little bit of hot glue to the tops of those candles and add our bats right on the into the glue. And then to make these hang, we're gonna use some inexpensive clear fishing line and then apply these to wherever we want. It'd be cute under a porch, but mine I actually hung underneath my mantle. Just using the remote control here to turn these off and on, which was really cool. You can see they are cute during the daytime, but obviously at nighttime is when they really come to life and give you that spirit spooky, eerie look. And ours were such a fraction of the price. I was able to make six of these for $9 versus $99 for four of them with the originals from Pottery Barn. Next up is going to be a Halloween yardstick dupe. These are four for $99. We're going to use a unique item from the Dollar Tree to recreate these. These are flexible cutting mats. You can find these in the kitchen section. They come in a set of two and they're actually really great size. They're 11 by 14. We do have to cut them down a little bit so they will fit on our 12 by 12 Cricut cutting mat. So it's very easy to do. You can use regular scissors, cuts through them easy peasy. Go ahead, take that cutting mat and apply it onto a standard grip cutting mat from Cricut. And then we're going to find some similar silhouettes in Cricut design space. And then I just loaded them onto my canvas. I've also made these projects extra easy for you. If you go into Cricut Design Space, you'll find my profile under the Daily DIYer, and I already have these projects loaded up and ready to go for you. So all you have to do is click on your favorite one, hit customize, it'll load it onto your canvas for you. It's already scaled. So all you have to do is basically hit make it, and it will cut it just the exact same sizes that I did. If you want to, you can even adjust them when you customize it to whatever size you want and however many you want as well. We obviously are going to be cutting these on a mat, so select that. This will pop up. You can see we're going to cut four different times here. You're also going to need to select your material setting. We're going to be choosing matte board for these cutting boards, 1.5 millimeters. And then you're also going to select more when it comes to the pressure option. And then go ahead, load your mat like you would with anything else, hit play. And as you can see, it's going to cut this several times, one after another. It'll cut all one big piece whenever you're done with it but to ensure that it goes through the thicker material of this cutting mat it automatically does that when you select more pressure 
Here are all of our shapes cut out. You can see it did a really nice job. Clean cuts all the way around this cutting board mat when you use those settings. And then we can start putting our garden stakes together. So we're also going to be grabbing these bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree. These are the longer ones, set of 12, and they're about three foot long. These are going to work great for the stakes that we need to add onto the backs of these shapes so we can insert, th insert them into our garden. So we're adding some super glue, just a line of that along the back of our shape, and then putting that stake in there. I also use some regular scotch tape to kind of hold it in place until that glue sets up. And then I also want to mention too, some of these need a little bit more support like this cat. So its tail, I was worried it was going to flop back. So I also grabbed these regular bamboo skewers, a pack of a hundred of them, scaled it down to size, and then just trimmed off the excess. Same process though, adding some super glue and some tape to hold it in place. The pumpkin did fine, but the bat's wings also did need some extra reinforcement with those smaller bamboo skewers. Now we can take these outside and spray paint them with some regular matte black spray paint. You're going to do the entire thing, the wood sticks, the plastic, and we are going to do two coats front and back, let the back dry, flip them over, do two coats on the front side. And this is where the magic really happens. This is where it transforms into something that looks just like black metal. And it gives us that look of our pottery barn. It gives us that dupe. Ours cost literally $5 to make versus the four that you get from pottery barn that cost $99. So a huge savings here. Still looks really, really nice. You can still get really custom with these. Cut out whatever shapes you want and spray paint them whatever color you want as well. Next is a really simple DIY. We're going to be making one of these Pottery Barn mugs, duping it. Four of them are $60 at Pottery Barn. We're going to head to Dollar Tree and grab a black mug for $1.50. And then we're going to be using this new product by Cricut. It is printable waterproof stickers. If you love Stanley Cups or creating your own stickers for water bottles, grab this product. I'll link it down below for you. We're going to recreate this Pottery Barn with these vintage ghosts. Again, an item that I will have in my profile down in the description box below. Click that. It'll load it up for you. You are going to print this through your Cricut Design Space. It's going to add these little boxed lines around the outside. We're going to add the R sticker paper onto our green cutting mat. Make sure it is laying flat. Mine got a little wrinkle in there. No problem. Lift it back up, smooth it out, load it into your Cricut machine. And as you can see, it'll kick this light on underneath. It's actually reading those lines and finding the exact location of it, calibrating your machine for you. So then it will go back in and perfect perfectly cut out these ghosts for you. It is so cool. This is a fun feature. If you haven't tried it with your Cricut machine, definitely give it a try. You'll be obsessed just like I am. Once it's done cutting, peel your sticker off that sticker paper and literally just apply it onto your mug. Obviously, you want to make sure your mug is good and clean and washed no dirt or lint, and then apply your sticker right onto your mug. These are waterproof, so you can use these and then wash them. I would definitely not put them in a dishwasher, but you can definitely hand wash these and these will stay vibrant and beautiful for you for the life of your mug. I love this. How cute did this turn out? And we got a huge savings here, $1.25 versus what the original ones were $15 each. A huge savings there onto our viral pumpkin pillow, $85.55. We're going to make this for a fraction of the cost. This is a pillow. I get these from Walmart. They're like three bucks and I use them for the stuffing on the inside. So it has worn down as I've crafted with it, but it had just enough in it for me to make the bones or the structure of my pillow for this ghost. So I just kind of gathered all the excess fabric at the bottom and then took a rubber band to close it off. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button that tells me that you enjoy Pottery Barn dupe videos and then I'll make more for you in the future. And if you see ideas that you like, you want to share with your friends, there is a share button below. You can click that and share your favorite ideas with your friends and family. Now that we have our ghost body, we need to cover it with some Sherpa fabric. The cheapest I could find was this huge 
blanket on Amazon. It was $11.99 and I'll link it down below for you. You could definitely get at least four to six pillows with this one blanket. It's that big. So there's other projects I will be using this for in the future, probably for Christmas time, thinking snowman maybe. But anyway, go ahead, lay that over the top of your pillow form and then cut this down to size. I cut mine into a square shape making a triangle and then cutting out the other two sides, opening that back up. And then we're going to use some hot glue to quote unquote seam these sides. You can always take a sewing machine to this and sew up the sides if you want to. This is a little bit quicker and I'm not the best sewer. So we usually go with the hot glue version and then go ahead and lay your smaller blanket now over your pillow form, get it to about the location that you want. And then I use some Cricut HTV to cut out two ovals that are going to be the eyes for our pillow. So I did cut these out with my Cricut machine and weeded them out. We're going to apply these with some heat to permanently set them onto this fabric. You just take a thin cloth, lay it over the top of your HTV, and then I'm gonna use my Easy Press for this. I have it set on 315 degrees for 30 seconds. You hit the button on top, it'll count down for you. Once it gets to zero, we're going to flip this blanket over to the other side and just press down on it for another 10 seconds. That helps pull the adhesive to the other side of the material. Let this cool and then you can go ahead and remove the plastic uh, transfer sheet that we had originally and we're left with the nice HTV eyeballs for our, our ghost pillow. Now go ahead and relay your blanket over your pillow form and hot glue that into place so it doesn't start wiggling off on you. Then this is a Dollar Tree sweater pumpkin. I was too late in the season to grab an orange ones. Those go pretty much quick and fast and are long gone, but that's not a problem. We are gonna tape off the stem of this pumpkin and use some fabric paint to make our own orange pumpkin. So just taking a bunch of orange and one drop of black to darken it up a little bit, stir the paint together and then take a foam paintbrush and go over the sweater of this pumpkin so it turns from white to orange. Once that has dried, we are gonna cut the stem off of this and also remove the painter's tape. And we have a nice orange pumpkin that we can use that will kind of mimic the original Pottery Barn pillow as it is holding a pumpkin in its hand. So just using some hot glue to wrap the blanket around it as it looks like it has hands underneath there holding our pumpkin. How stinking cute is this? Even though we didn't use the entire amount of fabric, even if you want to include the entire price of the blanket, we are still under $15. The original was $85.50, so we have saved over $70 creating this ourselves, and it was so easy and fun to do. Here's another fun DIY. The skeleton embroidered Sherpa pillow was $49.50. We're going to make one a little bit different using some Cricut Magic. You'll need one of their pillow covers. These are about $10, so still a great savings already. We're gonna have some fun with their infusible ink. This set came with some buffalo plaid, but it also came with black, which is going to be the skeleton hands for our project. This is another fun uh, DIY. If you've never tried infusible ink before, super easy to do. Apply the material to your mat. I will also have this design in my Cricut profile. Just load it up, send it over to your machine. It will cut it out for you. And then it is very similar to HTV where you do want to mirror your design whenever you go to cut it. And then once you remove it from your mat, you're going to peel it away just like HTV and you'll have that clear plastic sticky material left behind. Go ahead, cut your skeleton hands apart so we can work with them individually. I have gone ahead and done my best to iron out the pillow cover. You also want to take a lint roller and roll that along your fabric and then lay your hands in place on your pillow cover. For infusible ink material, you do want to set your easy press to 385 degrees and 40 seconds. It also comes with a butcher paper that you will put in between your easy press and your material. And 
since this was a little bit larger of a pillow, it took me four presses, but again, only 40 seconds each press. And once you get through each one of those, you can go ahead and remove the transfer tape and the material that's left behind and see the magic happen. So the cool thing about infusible ink is this ink actually becomes permanently part of your pillow. There's no raised surfaces. It is washable and as I said, permanent. So it is really, really neat, very vibrant once you press it. Our pillow cost about $11 versus the original that was close to 50. This also makes a really cute set with our ghost pillow as well. Great for your living room during Halloween. Next, we're going to recreate this ghost wreath. Normally $59. We're going to make ours for about five bucks. <laughs> it's going to be great. So this was a straw wreath from the Dollar Tree Plus section for only $3. Grabbing out our black matte spray paint again. These do come nice and wrapped up. I would definitely suggest this is an outdoor wreath as it is going to shed quite a bit. Take your wreath over to the side, knock off any loose pieces before you come back in with your spray paint. This did take three coats front and back. So have some patience with this. A nice warm day definitely helps the process go a lot faster. And once you get the front side done, flip it over, do the back side, same thing, three coats. Looks pretty good, right? So now we need to add our ghost to the center of this. Grabbed a styrofoam ball from Dollar Tree and we're gonna use some white cotton fabric. Just cover the ball with the fabric, cut it down to size, and then we're gonna mark the front where we're gonna put some eyeballs. We're gonna be using some smart iron-on material by Cricut to apply the eyeballs and our easy press set at 315 degrees for 30 seconds. Add your oval shapes to your Cricut design space in canvas and then send it over to your machine so it will cut. Smart iron-on actually does not need a mat, so that's a nice feature to using this material. You just feed it right in there, it cuts it, you weed it, and then it is ready to apply. So I did cut these apart. I had marked on my fabric where to put each one of the eyeballs. And again, using the easy, easy press here to iron the HTV, making sure to let it dry in between before peeling off the plastic transfer tape. And voila, we have some eyeballs for our wreath. We're going to reapply this onto our styrofoam ball with the help of some more of our uh, clear fishing line. We're going to take a needle and go through the fabric, through the styrofoam, pull the string through, and then use that to attach over the wreath. It just kind of disappears and our ghost looks like he is just suspended and hanging in the center of the wreath. Very, very cool. Looks so, so cute. And like I said, a huge savings here. Ours only cost about $5 to make versus the original that was close to $60. So how much do we save? Total, theirs would have cost $452 retail. Ours DIYing was only $38.75, a savings of over $413. So definitely worth DIYing versus buying. If you want to see how you can save more money using Dollar Tree items turned into fall Pottery Barn dupes, you definitely want to click the video that is popping up on your screen right now. I will see you over there. Thanks for watching.